Just a couple of days ago, I got into the Midjourney beta. For those of you who might not know, Midjourney is an AI image generation tool. I find this whole AI field quite exciting, and so far I've had a lot of fun with it. So I thought it would be nice to share with you some of the images I managed to produce with uh, Midjourney, and of course, my first impressions. So without further ado, let's start. The way Midjourney works is really simple. You write down a prompt like glass of water on a table, and after a while the AI spits out four image variations based on that prompt. You then have two options. You can either guide the AI to further explore one of these variations, or you can ask it to give you a high-res version of one of those images. And that's basically it. It's really simple to get into. I still have to experiment more with the tool and see where the boundaries are, but from what I've seen so far, I think I have a good idea of what's possible. Overall, the images I got back were interesting, but nothing too exceptional. I think that's because I was a bit too conservative with my prompts. Thankfully though, other users weren't, and since everyone can see everyone else's images, I was blown away by some of them. From what I've seen so far, the crazier and more abstract the prompts are, the more exciting the results will be. But before I show you the images from other users, let me first show you the ones I got from my prompts. And I'll start with my favorite one first. These are the first four results I got back. Midjourney starts with lower res images first, because the system prioritizes speed over detail. And on top of that, keep in mind that the system is being hammered by a ton of requests from other users, so producing everything in high quality would be prohibitively expensive. All four images have a really nice mood and some interesting compositions. Nothing jaw-dropping, but pleasing overall. I think the one that stands out the most is the first one, and that's the one I chose for a final high-res version. It's interesting to see the AI's decisions. For example, the city is drenched in fog, even though I didn't state that in my prompt. So my guess is that the AI, after analyzing a ton of images, noticed that artists usually go for a moody, atmospheric look. But don't quote him on that, it's just a guess. The time of day is also an interesting choice. It's either sunrise or sunset, which allows for a more colorful sky and specks of light spread out around the image. The AI definitely nailed the mood of the image. The color palette is also spot on. It definitely looks like a sci-fi illustration. I also like the shape of the spaceship quite a lot. I imagine the bottom tangling bits to be either some organic-like shapes or wires. The composition is not the most exciting, but it's interesting nonetheless. It feels like someone is documenting the arrival of the spaceship from afar. I want to explore the spaceship theme a little bit more, so I thought of bringing things closer to current day Earth rather than a city of the future, so I modified the prompt a tiny bit. What's interesting here is that except for the fourth image, none of the other images really follow the prompt. For some reason, the AI decided to have New York as a floating city and as the actual spaceship. It's really weird to see and I'm not exactly sure why it got so confused. But I do like the vignetting decision in the first two images. It looks like someone snapped a Polaroid photo to document the event. It's a really interesting choice. Given the fact that the fourth image is the closest one to what I wanted to see, I decided to use that as the building block for the variations. For some reason, <laughs> the system keeps giving me this flat composition. We're kinda stuck on this side view angle. What I was hoping for was a more dynamic composition, maybe seeing the spaceship from above and having the high-rise buildings underneath, or the other way around, shooting from the ground up so we would have this extreme view of the skyscrapers and a huge spaceship casting shadows onto the buildings. But I got none of that. <laughs> Instead, we have a very flat view with only a couple of buildings. Just for the fun of it, I asked for a high-res version of number four just to see what kind of details we would get. It's not bad, it just feels kinda bland. That's when I decided to help the system a little bit more, so I adjusted my prompt accordingly. I thought this would give me much better results, but again, the AI was giving me something completely different. For some reason, it still wanted to draw the city on top of the spaceship. I just don't know why it keeps doing that. I'm also not sure what's going on in the first image. It kind of looks like the top of the Congress building and a huge spaceship hiding in the clouds. 
Could be, not exactly sure what the AI was going for here. The second and fourth image were kind of closer to what I was going for, but not exactly. My guess is that the AI doesn't have a lot of images of New York, so it doesn't really understand what it needs to do. For example, in the fourth image, the skyscraper is very abstract, and the majority of the image is covered by these white bits. Is it a geyser? A smoke trail? I don't know what's going on there, but it's trying to do something. I just don't get what that something is. But because I'm stubborn, <laughs> I decided to explore this a little bit more. I wanted to see if I could get closer to what I had in mind. So I asked the system to give me some more variations of the fourth image. As you can see, I definitely did not get what I wanted. The system keeps giving me one big building and that's it. Maybe I should have been more explicit with my description. Something like a wide angle view or something like that. But putting that description aside, the AI still has a hard time drawing skyscrapers. It looks like it doesn't really get how skyscrapers look. I decided to just ask for a high res version of the fourth image just to see if things would improve. It kind of looks like a tall building and we see also the top of another one on the bottom right side of the image, but I just don't get what this white thing is. <laughs> is it trying to combine two buildings together? I have no clue. It would be awesome if at some point the team would allow users to send back images for more training. Just to tell the system, here you go, this is more of what I was looking for. But at the same time, I see how this could easily be abused, so maybe it's for the better that we cannot do that. But yeah, I was quite surprised. I thought that the AI would do much better with this prompt. And talking about surprises, the illustrations of the next prompt were just off the charts weird. I did not expect the AI to have such a hard time drawing hands. I was definitely expecting a more true to life shape. There's not a single image where the hand looks like a real hand. And I'm curious if that has to do with the fact that the AI is not trained with images of hands, which I find incredibly hard to believe, or if it has to do with my prompt. Something is making the AI glitch out hard. <laughs> In hindsight, I should have tried an even simpler prompt, something like a hand just to see what kind of images I would get back. Would it be an actual hand or something weird like these ones here? I should have also tried giving the AI some more descriptors. For example, other users were telling the system to draw a realistic picture of something, and usually the AI was returning something that did look realistic and less like an abstract painting. But yeah, it looks like buildings and hands are giving the system a hard time. Landscapes, on the other hand, fare much better. I kept seeing some beautiful results from other users, so I decided to give it a try myself. In this case, the AI was spot on. The results I got back actually looked eerily similar to some of my own photos. It was really funny to see. For some reason, the lights I mentioned in the prompt are part of the tree and not part of the background, like I requested. But I actually like that even more. So if I would rebuild this image myself, I would definitely go even more surreal, adding more lights onto the tree. But yeah, this one was closer to what I was expecting. But of course, I didn't stop there. <laughs> I've experimented with quite a few more prompts. Some are better than others, but overall it was really interesting to see how the AI would interpret the descriptions. And it was definitely a lot of fun to see the AI build the images in real time. From what I've seen with my images and the images of other users, the system is not being very adventurous with perspectives and composition. It's usually either a front view or a side view, with the subject being right in front and center. There are images with some perspective, but usually there's not a lot of exploration in angles or focal lengths. This could very well be a user error and we just have to describe things a little bit better, but for sure the defaults are more conservative. Now, let me show you some images from other users. I think some of them look amazing, and I would easily hang those on my wall. The AI is definitely really strong in choosing good color palettes, and also imitating different styles. It might not be exactly the look you have in mind, but you can definitely get a lot of variants, from cartoony to painterly and realistic. But the AI sometimes struggles describing the human form. 
From afar, things will look fine, but under close inspection, the illustrations can give you nightmares. Sometimes it looks like the forms are made out of meat glued together. But yeah, when the AI gets it right, the results are amazing. I see these AI-based tools as a great starting point for creating your own artwork, similar to how you would browse Pinterest to collect reference material. But in this case, it's even more targeted to your needs. You can quickly explore color palettes, compositions, or just get inspired by the random elements the AI will come up with. Elements that you might have even thought of implementing in your artwork. It's a great tool when you're stuck or in a creative rut. You can quickly grab ideas here and there and start working on your piece without the dread of the empty canvas. But what do you think? I would be interested to hear your thoughts. Is this something you would use in your work? And what do you think of the results? Let me know in the comments below. And that is it for this video. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.